Hi, I'm Peter Bogard and I'm the chair of uh, art and design here at Lawrence Tech. And tonight I'd like to welcome uh, my friend and former colleague, Marcus Oliver. Um, as a partner and innovation director at Fahrenheit 212, an innovation consultancy in New York City, Marcus invents and drives transformational ideas to market. Over the past decade, he has built and launched new products across five continents in technology, financial services, food, beverage, insurance, fashion, toys, um, and among other things, household and personal care. His client list includes uh, Coca-Cola, Starwood Hotel and Resorts, uh, Outback Steakhouse, Hillshire Brands, Procter & Gamble, Diageo, and Samsung, to name a few. Marcus has been the keynote speaker at the Creative Forum in Oslo in 2012. Uh, in addition, he has sat in on panels uh, at AdAge uh, and lectured at numerous business schools across the nation. Marcus has also been published and cited in innovation and technology uh, magazines ranging from Campaign to T3. Um, his lecture tonight will focus on insights and innovation. Marcus believes that transformational design answers start with transformational questions, and he leads Fahrenheit's teams through exploratory research and idea generation to ensure the delivery of bigger, bolder innovations for his clients. He has instituted methods at Fahrenheit that pollinate acro insights across categories and verticals, uh, leading to bigger ideas that make you feel like you're seeing uh, the obvious for the first time. Uh, I feel that Marcus and Fahrenheit 212 make true the College of Architecture and Design's commitment to theory and practice through exploring design as a tool for creating new project, products, businesses, and service through multidisciplinary practice. Uh, furthermore, Fahrenheit's unique business model reinforces our notion of practice by placing an emphasis on success in market over simple idea generation and iteration by placing two-thirds of the project compensation on the line at the beginning of the project. Uh, Marcus possesses a keen ability for distilling large bodies of information uh, down into focused, compelling consumer insights, and more importantly, translating those insights into actual objects. Uh, over my time at Fahrenheit, Marcus served as a key mentor in my professional development, uh, and I know that he will add value and shape your thinking in the short time that we have with him tonight. Uh, without um, any more time, please welcome me and joining Marcus. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to give you a little bit of... Uh, subject matter and, and teaching that can, um, can be broad, broad enough that you can uh, uh, appropriate to whatever you're, you're interested in doing. Um, innovation's a, a, a bit of a funny job anyway because um, it's very hard to describe what I do. So um, my wife has kind of given up. It's a little bit embarrassing. When, I, when we go out to cocktail parties, she'll basically describe it as uh, um, well, he, he sort of works creatively for companies that can't think creatively for themselves, which is, uh, you know, it was a little bit difficult if it's a client she's speaking to, but um, the, uh, my son, who's, uh, who's now four, he, he, uh, he's decided that um, the best, easiest way to describe what it is I do is, is daddy makes new things. So in that regard, I think we're all going to be, you know, fairly aligned uh, tonight. So hopefully uh, um, uh, that will be the theme of my, uh, my talk. So there are a few just uh, to give you a little understanding as to um, who, who we are. Um, we're uh, an innovation consultancy, and we have offices in uh, New York and, and, and San Francisco. And uh, what we do is effect we, we create growth um, for our clients. And we do that by creating new things, as my son would say. And, and they tend to be products um, or services or businesses. And, and what we don't tend to do is, is specialize into, in, into to one area, one vertical. And I'll explain some of the areas that, that, that we tackle um, in a little bit. Um, and we take people from very different backgrounds. In fact, we, we have several uh, uh, people who used to be architects and as well as a number of uh, uh, different industries where we've pulled from. Um, and we really like that varied outlook, right? The, 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 the breadth of, uh, of, of the multidisciplinary talents is very important for us. Um, when, we when we first started, there wasn't really an innovation industry. There wasn't much people with, with a history of innovation. So it's a lot easier now to find people with a resume that, that is, 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 is that way. But, but you don't always know how things are going to progress and where you're going to end up. And, and you know, certainly when I was in college, this didn't exist, uh, innovation consultancy. So 
it, it, it's interesting to, to sort of be able to sort of cast your mind back, and we've certainly pulled from, from a number of different areas. There are a number of things that, um, that make us unique, um, uh, that, you know, or at least the combination of these things that make us unique um, are, are, are three in my mind. Um, we work across a number of different categories. Um, we employ a money and magic philosophy, and we have a business model that is outcome-based, as, as, as Peter mentioned. So I'll very quickly uh, just demonstrate what those three are. So cross-category, these are some of the clients that we have. Um, and some of the verticals that, we talk, that I talked about, consumer packaged goods, um, retail and hospitality, financial services, uh, technology and entertainment. And, and we apply the same process and the same thinking, the same rationale as to how we go about finding new things, new products, new businesses, if it's for City or if it's for Campbell's. And, and that is some of what I'm going to share with you today because I think it can be appropriate in, in, in answering and finding answers in a number of different places. So the second thing that um, in combination makes us unique is this money and magic part. Um, you know, our, our approach is to this, this two sides of this equation. Um, whether the challenge uh, we set out to solve, you know, it's instinctively needing both of those, those sides. We really feel that it is. If you solve for just one side, um, you, you, you get an answer that isn't going to resonate, isn't going to last, isn't going to stick. If you, if you come up with a great consumer answer, but it's not built to go through a business, it's not going to work. And equally, there are uh, you know, many business ideas that, that they just they can't get that consumer need or a or, 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 or way of making that stick and resonate with, with, with a customer. So, we built our whole business around these two, these two areas, and we have people that specialize in, 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 in one or the other, right? We have people who, who come from uh, a, you know, business schools or, or have MBAs, um, or they've worked at a, a financial consultancy. They tend to also be comics or entrepreneurs or musicians or, or something that meant that they weren't so happy in those careers or that industry as, the, as they might have been, and they've come to a company like us. And we also have people from branding, um, from, uh, from design, um, uh, in both industrial design and packaging design as, uh, that, that will, will sit on, on, on the magic side from, uh, you know, my, my own background is in, um, in, in psychology, so I started off, um, you know, understanding uh, how consumers worked and, and, uh, and, and built that from there. And then the third piece is uh, this, this risk and reward uh, piece. So um, for us, um, we're really obsessed about delivering meaningful outcomes. And we'll put up to two thirds of our possible revenue at risk um, to, to make sure that we will try and achieve that outcome. Now, you know, that's a massively bold statement to do, um, to, to you know, put, put, put that amount at risk, but it, it, it does two things for us. One, it makes sh damn sure we are focused on the right thing of achieving that outcome. Um, and secondly, um, it really aligns us with our clients, right? So they have the same goal as we do. We'll go through the same process and stages of, of, of milestones and success as, as, uh, as, 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 as they have. And if they say to us, actually, we don't think this is going in the right direction, we'll go, all right, let's get it in the right direction because it's important to us to hit that milestone. It's not important to us that we have the shiny product that we first came up with. It's much more important that we have that outcome. So um, that's really changed the way that we work. Um, and in combination uh, it's, it, it, of, of those other pieces, it really makes us uh, a different business to, to a lot of our competition. So that's enough background about Fahrenheit. Um, and uh, what I really wanted to uh, talk to you today about um, was uh, insight. And uh, there are sort of four areas um, of conversation um, for the main focus of this evening. Um, the first uh, is around what exactly is an insight. Um, it, so I'm going to explain it's one of those slightly amorphous words and hopefully I can start bringing some, some, some clarity to, 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 to what that is. I'll then explain a little bit about 
some various different types of insight um, and you know, how we start to think about that, how you may start to think about that um, in, in what you do. I'm going to bring alive uh, some of the work that we've done based off some of those insights, hopefully um, uh, explaining the, uh, the types of insights um, in, 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 in more clarity. Um, and then a little bit about places and, and, and ways to find them. Um, I, you know, some of these uh, may be familiar to you, and, 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 and hopefully uh, others are going to be going to be fresh. So this first piece around what is an insight. It's incredibly important for uh, an industry like innovation. Um, it really is the lifeblood. It's the spark that that gets it all going. Um, and without it, we're going to struggle. But it's this sort of insight word, this, this, this is filled with this ambiguity, right? Um, it's not just about what an insight is, but um, an entrenched myth about where it resides. And, and by letting you know, this staleness you know, reach into uh, the ways we extract it. Um, the word has been you know, bastardized or changed or used in so many different ways over the year. It's, it's, it's a little like innovation itself or the word create, creativity. It's, it's very hard to, to understand um, uh, exactly uh, um, you know, what that word insight means. It reminded me of a very famous quote um, by uh, Justice Potter Stewart. And, uh, the expression uh, that he, he uttered became one of those most famous um, phrases in, 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 in history of the Supreme Court. And it, it, the, the quote was, um, I shall not today attempt further, I should get even more pompous in my voice actually probably at this time, I shall not today attempt further to define the kinds of material I understand to be embraced within that shorthand description and perhaps I could never succeed in intelligibly doing so, but I know it when I see it. And, and, and that seemed like that was the definition that people would provide about insight. It was kind of, oh yeah, it's over there. And, um, and, and there was no more clarity as to how you would go about trying to do that. Um, so, you know, this, this seemed like it wasn't the best, uh, uh, the, the, the best place to start in some regard. So, um, I did some research. Um, I began looking in some traditional sources. Uh, firstly, if you put it into your Microsoft Word dictionary, it'll say, uh, um, you know, these four uh, very handy um, uh, descriptions. The first is that it's perceptiveness. The second, it's clear perception. Third, self self-awareness, um, and uh, this last one, I really love this, uh, perception that hallucinations are not real. It's uh, obviously a very, very handy one. Perhaps the person who was writing that didn't have that insight at that particular time. Um, it really does say that if you, if you follow it up. Um, the Webster Dictionary uh, calls it the act or result of apprehending the inner nature of things of seeing intuitively which is kind of, it's capturing it more as a, as a capability rather than a thing. And, 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 and I, so I don't think that's going to be much help either. So moving from the sort of the more traditional definitions to maybe the more on pulse definition. What does the crowd say? What does Wikipedia say? How, um, how can they help us in this situation? Well, they've served up a, a, a great collection of, uh, of definitions. It's a piece of information. Well, that's ne not enough. Um, it's never just that. Um, it's uh, introspection. Well, it can be, but that seems like it's, 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 it's lacking something too. Insight is the understanding of a specific cause and effect in specific context. Proof that saying specific and being specific are two very different things. Um, and then lastly, um, and this is uh, totally true as well, an understanding of cause and effect based on identification of relationships and behaviors within a model, context, or scenario. Please see artificial intelligence. Um, it is, again, not 
hugely helpful. So within the world of innovation, because it's such an important thing, perhaps, perhaps there's, there's places to turn there. Perhaps there are answers that we can think of that allow for um, you know, some of the industry insiders uh, to help us here. The Fortune 100 Insight Director um, says, it's the aha. It's that door opener that says, hey, you're talking about me. It's that goosebump moment. It's an epiphany. IDEO's Tim Brown says, that insight cannot yet be codified, quantified, or even defined. Not yet, at any rate. Makes it the most difficult, but also the most exciting part of the design process. So both of these guys are still saying, you know, I see it when I, when I, I know it when I see it. They're still sort of leaning towards that. And, and, and you've got that, that goosebump moment of, you know, I feel that there's an insight there, but, but still there's no more help about, about how we can frame it and how we can make it accurate. And, and so what I wanted to do today was to start building out what we see as some of the characteristics and, and, and get to you know, some definition and, 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 and move on to types. So there are some key characteristics of, of, of an insight in, in, in our mind. The first, it's an observation rather than a speculation, which is about that sight part, right? The second is it's not obvious, which refers to that in part. It has to contain an inner truth. It's mind opening. It's fresh and it creates a sense of possibility in, the, in its mind openingness. It usually embodies a tension, right, or, or a pain point or an unfilled desire which has relevance to that, you know, that task at hand. And it normally has, has altitude, and it inspires, right? Equally, there are things that it isn't. It's never just a fact. It's not a broad truth or universal belief out there that, that anybody could see. It's not conjecture about what could be. As we define it, it's a fresh, potent, and energizing truth about lives, products, brands, or businesses. And it ignites and guides the idea development process, or indeed any process, towards finding you know, the next thing, towards finding the big ideas. resolving big tensions and, and opening up big opportunities. And you know you've got it right when it's got these four pieces to it. Fresh, potent, energizing truth. So if, if you can put the things that, that you're looking for through these filters and you can know that it, it, it answers these, you're, you're going to be in a good place, right? Fresh, have you heard it before? Does it sound new? Is it unique? Potent. Does it provoke with a clear tension? Does it seem important and possible at the same time? That energizing, that's a little bit of the goosebumps that, 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 that Tim Brown talked about, right? It, it, does it thrill you? Does it, does it make you want to do something with it? Does it get you excited? Does it fill you with ideas that you just can't stop stop but yourself but, but running to? Does it make you smile? And then lastly, truth. Does, does it fill you, does it, uh, does it seem sensible? Does it seem believable? Does it answer um, what, what, what's something you believe to be, to, to be true about that? So that's, uh, as we've started to work and, and really getting to what we thought an insight is and, 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 and how it's defined. And then, as we went on, we started to understand a little bit more about the various types of insight. And, and I think as, you, as we, we go through this, um, there are, of course, two vectors of which, um, or two large categories that, that we look for 
as we're a business that specializes and, and separates our, our thinking on the money and the magic. So we have commercial insights um, about the company, about the channel, the distribution perhaps, uh, and opportunity spaces that where the business could play. So insights that are going to open up things about the, the, the commercial opportunities for a business. And we have insights on the consumer side about tangible pain points and unmet needs uh, for the consumer. And, and it's, it, it's really the consumer side that I'm going to focus on today because I think it's going to be the most useful um, for you guys. No matter which side, though, there is a, there's, a, there's this hierarchy of, of consumer understanding here and, and, and ways to, to start to think about what, what an insight might be. On the surface, you know, there's always facts. And, you know, they're true, they're, they're, they're visible, they're, they're, they're able for all to see. And anyone that's done their homework on, on a particular category should be able to, to know these or, 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 or find these uh, on any given, given business. And, and the usual places of search are, are typically fine to, to understand some of those facts. But if you go a little deeper, one layer down, you get to these accepted consumer beliefs. And these accepted consumer beliefs, they're, they're a little bit more than facts. They're things that, that tend to be known about within inside a category. Um, they're, they're held by beliefs by big numbers of consumers. Anyone uh, who's, who's spent some time among those consumers or within a category should have a pretty good understanding about these accepted consumer beliefs. So presumably, the, our clients, uh, presumably the, the, uh, the, the people we're working for, should know most of these two. So we really have to get a layer deeper too. And that's to, to the insight below the surface. And this is where the, the fresh, potent, and energizing truths are going to lie. Digging below those, the, those accepted consumer beliefs. And these are pearls not known to, to all. Um, but hopefully, they can frame competitive advantages for us. They can frame new ways that we can tackle problems and think about uh, you know, ways to, to come up with new businesses, new products, and new services. And we categorize them seven different ways. Firstly, behavioral insights. Right, these are the ones where you're looking at people and, and you're seeing uh, them do compensatory behavior, right? They're doing things that, that, they're doing those extra things. They're going beyond the, the, the normal process that would be involved in that for some reason or another. These are around pain points. They're often pain points that can be vocalized. You know, um, I hate paying my bills, right? This frustration can be can be seen as well as, as, as heard in cases like that. There are insights around what people are doing and the why behind their, their actions in those cases. And when you think about what you do in, 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 in your life and, and, and looking to, to, to things out there, behavior is, is a massive guide for, 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 for insights. When you look to, to how people are acting, Next, we have functional insights. Um, these are around the jobs that we need to do to get done and the product's role within that. Now, think around the, the, the product's use um, and how useful it is in any given situation. Is that the intended use? Is it the most appropriate use for, for, for whatever it should be doing? Um, we, we worked on uh, Samsung Smart TV, and I don't know if anybody's uh, familiar with that product, but um, it was described in research as TV plus internet to us. And uh, as we uh, you know, dug into it, the, the, the Samsung was saying that the, the Smart TV had not been working very well. The Smart Hub had not had any use. And we could see in research, when people described how they would like TV, they would they'd lean back and they'd relax. 
And yet this smart hub, this was lean forward, this was working. They had to get in there and program things. The same reason Google TV hasn't worked. It's because the function of that was built wrong for the situation. It was built wrong for the TV. So you always have to understand the, the, the role of the function. Here it's, it's about thinking what moving parts, what tools, what tasks are going to be involved and, 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 and building your insights up from that. Next we have emotional insights. And these are all un, uh, around the underlying feelings um, and emotions for things and the consequences of those feelings. Probably the, the easiest type to understand, um, but they're often harder to articulate um, than the previous two. They're often harder to, to, to sort of to, to understand what it is that um, in a, is at the heart of that emotion, right? Now, the psychologist is great here. They'll, they'll give you, you know, lots of different, uh, well, the traditional psychologist can be great here. They'll give you lots of meaning behind the meaning, behind the meaning of what people say. This really involves searching for, for those human feelings that, 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 that are in play. We then have experiential insights. And these are around how we engage the senses. Um, how we're titillated or bored. What do you experience when you're going through a different process? Um, when you interact with a product, how, how does that make you feel? How does that, how, how does that, how does that whole package is, is, is experienced? And then we have situational insights, which tend to be around a moment, um, a location, a situation. This could be time. Um, it could be a culture situation, it could be a, a, a physical situation, the environment, the place. Sixth um, are interpersonal insights. And uh, these are to do with our interaction with each other. Um, so each, uh, each relationship, each, each, each person has a bond. And, and, and the bonds that occur in, in those their insights into how they are interacting together. So you look out for these uh, interactions and the interpersonal activity that happens between people in different moments and, and with different products. And lastly, we, we consider there to be a, a seventh one uh, around choice-based insights. And these are around the, the, the trade-offs. I'll always choose this one over that, right? The one you're probably most familiar with is, you know, Apple versus PC, right? Apple managed to reframe that conversation against all PCs it, or Apple. It's uh, the full fat hamburger that you eat with your Diet Coke, right? You've made that choice. Um, these are the trade-offs that, that we make and, and, you, and, and in that there's, there's insight as to why people are doing this. So I understand that's quite a lot to go through and, and, and without, um, what I'm hoping to do is, is to bring those alive a little bit for you. So we have um, uh, built our business very much off digging for insights, both on the commercial side and, and on the consumer side, and building those into new products and new businesses. And, and hopefully, as I begin to move into demonstrating some of these, I can show you some of the answers, some of the things that we've created and, and look back towards the insights that those, um, those came from. This is a, a, a selection of, uh, of, of products that um, we've launched within the last few years. Um, not all of them I have personally worked on, but the majority. Um, it's been uh, a lot of fun. We've had uh, a lot of experience with Samsung, as well as working with Coca-Cola. Um, but because of the nature of the cross category and, and the verticals that we do, it really can be in anywhere. Um, you know, we have uh, Starwood as a client, we have Nutrisystem as a client. Each one we've applied these different thinking on insights to and had um, interesting answers. The one I'm gonna start with is actually Mashrack, which is, uh, 
um, a bank um, in Dubai. And they came to us with this brief of um, how do we create a, a bank-wide single currency and reward system um, that, that, that will allow us to create a loyalty program that can then drive the number of products uh, that customers have. And here, our insight was all around the experience and how it was missing, it was missing an experience in this, in, 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 in this world. And I have uh, a video that I'll play. We always create a, a video prototype that brings alive um, our ideas. This is the one from Mashrak. To be human is to dream. Some dreams are simple. Some are grand. Some come true quickly. Some take more time. But between those that remain just dreams and those that come true, lies one simple truth. They come together not all at once, but piece by piece. This is the inspiration behind a whole new approach to banking, taking shape before your very eyes. Salam Mosaic by Meshrik. Through Mosaic, something extraordinary happens. Adding new pieces to your financial picture doesn't just make the picture more complete. It actually transforms the pieces that came before right before your eyes. At your branch, your Salam host will show you how. As Mosaic makes your money worth more, earning you exquisite seven-star rewards and opening doors to a better lifestyle. For instance, you'll see how adding a new credit card magically raises the interest rate on the savings account you already had. Adding a term deposit improves the terms of your existing mortgage and credit cards. Adding mobile banking makes annual credit card fees disappear and gets you complimentary monthly wire transfers. And the longer you bank with us, the more points you earn on every transaction towards Salam's unmatched 7-star rewards and unexpected privileges. In fact, everything you add improves everything that came before it. Because suddenly, all the pieces are working together. Salam Mosaic, where dreams take shape right before your eyes. Um, so the, 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 the problem there was there was a number of different silos within the bank that, that, that didn't didn't see each other, didn't, didn't, and the visibility that consumers had on, on owning a number of, 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 of products was not, was, was not brought alive. So what we did was we, we, we built that system where each one interacted with, with, with the other, and that piece of technology that, that we created there, we were actually able to, to create IP, and, and, and Mashrak were, together with us, able to license that out to some other um, uh, uh, banks for, for other loyalty programs to, to be created. Mashrak are never going to dominate the world uh, in, in the banking world, but that technology has, 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 has the possibility to do so. Um, Next, uh, I wanted to talk uh, about um, nature's variety um, instinct. So, um, do we have any dog owners here? A couple, a few, excellent. Um, I don't know whether you're familiar with uh, uh, nature's variety uh, raw food, but um, it's, uh, the benefits of, of raw food are immense. If you get a chance to feed that to your dog, please do. Um, they literally uh, become physically fitter. Uh, their hair, you know, improves. Their, we've seen uh, case studies, and, and my dog is, is one of them, where the, you know, the activity level and, and the, the, the vibrancy of, of the dog that's fed on raw is, is so much greater than, than fed on, on traditional kibble. Um, but the, when, we, when Nature's Variety came to us, they had a big problem, which was um, these uh, raw burgers were a real pain for consumers. Um, they needed to be uh, thawed for six hours. Um, they needed to be uh, perhaps cut up to, to fit the size of the dog. Um, people did not like handling um, raw chicken burgers um, or raw veal burgers or whatever they, they were. And yet, so there was all of these 
barriers, and yet the health, the health examples and the health possibilities of feeding raw were, 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 were becoming clearer and clearer in the market. And, but people didn't want to touch it. We needed to find a way to, to leap over that, um, the, the, those barriers. We needed to find a way to change people's behavior. And changing people's behavior is incredibly hard. But we started with those behavioral insights, understanding that actually, if we could make it a lot more familiar in its feeding process, if we could find ways to, to de-risk raw, then we were going to find ways that we could open it up to more consumers. And Instinct Raw Bites was, was, was that first product where this is still frozen raw, but it's in very small kibble form. So consumers can remove that straight from their freezer and pour it into the bowl, and it defrosts within seconds, not hours. Um, dogs get that same benefit. Owner has all of the, the, the benefit for their dog and none of the, the barriers that existed before. Um, that product has been uh, Petco's uh, n uh, innovation of the year uh, last year, um, and it's uh, resulted in 34% uh, uh, that, and, and together with this other product that we created, have been a 34% growth for Nature's Variety uh, last year. So, you know, this is a small company. That's how big some of the changes can be. Uh, they're a third bigger than they were when they started working with us. Um, this is actually uh, another product um, that we created for them, um, which is a freeze-dried raw powder. They already created a, a freeze-dried burger, but uh, we found a way to turn that into a, a pallet increaser and a supplement, basically using the sweepings and the raw the, the leftover product from their other process. This is now bigger than that, that, that product, so they're having to make it in different ways. But um, again, uh, uh, an, another success uh, for, the, for the company. Um, we uh, created um, a vending machine uh, for Samsung, um, um, which is a, a, a big product for, for Coke. But the original brief that Samsung came to us uh, um, came to us with was uh, they, the, the LCD market was uh, becoming saturated. Um, it existed in, in, in computers, uh, in, 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 in phones, uh, TVs, uh, and, and yet the prices, particularly in TVs, were dropping year after year after year. What they really needed was another market. And um, we developed, I think, 10 different possibilities of which uh, three are in market for them. Um, their brief was between 10 inches and 52 inches, I believe, um, as to what the, uh, you know, these screens could be. And, and they could really be anywhere. Um, and here, the insight was really around, uh, the, for this particular product, was around the function, the function of, 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 of what a vending machine was. Um, up until this point, it really was just a dumb box that was uh, you know, either for, for consumers or for retailers, it was a dumb box. For, for, for consumers, um, it provided that cold drink, and that was great, but it did, did nothing more than, 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 than that. And for the retailer, it provided that distribution system, and perhaps at best, it advertised one of the products, which the machine may have even sold out of at that time, but at least it was, it, it was a, a, a small billboard at, at that point. We created uh, U-Vending um, and, and, and really changed the function of what the, the, the vending machine is. Or, or, uh, and I'll explain a little bit about the success that we've seen here. Once upon a time, a vending machine was just a distribution point. A store where there wasn't a store. A box of levers, ramps, wires, and wheels with a plug in the back and a slot in the front and a door for your pop to pop out of with a little bump and shake. But one day, it changed. The LCD screen became a window to vending's future, turning that dumb box of gears into a seducer. It became a marketing chameleon, promoting every brand it held, not just one. It could automatically stop promoting the stuff it had sold out of and push what it still had. 
And in an age where innovation is the lifeblood of food and beverage companies, vending became innovation's best friend. Putting a new product's message in front of a consumer who was ready to buy with coins in hand and offering trial-inducing pricing for the most impactful sampling in food and beverage history, the transformation was easy to implement. All it took to unleash these new machines' potential was inserting a data disk while restocking the machine. The effects on the business were immediate. Purchase velocity, total sell-through, and getting new products talked about and tasted on the street. Then, someone made a connection that pushed it further. Marrying the screens with wireless connectivity, turning disconnected assets into the world's first media network owned by a marketer. So a push of a button at headquarters could put marketing ideas on the streets of the world in seconds. With real-time sales data streaming back, turning the vending network into a living lab. Marketers realized that this was not simply a TV on the street, but a new medium between the reach of TV and the personal response of the web. Connecting headquarters to the street, connecting vending to its future, networked vending, shaking the machine. So the uh, changing that dumb box um, where you struggle to even get your slightly creased dollar bill into uh, a lot more charismatic and, 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 and active uh, uh, advertising vehicle. Um, one where you know the contents are going to be there and it'll just uh, allow you to um, you know, purchase the, the pieces that are there. So there, I think there are um, uh, around 5,000 of these machines uh, uh, in, in production. Um, you may have seen them. Uh, around. Uh, the first uh, test uh, that, that was done, they placed one of these machines in a mall at one end and a traditional machine at, at the other end, which had always been there. And I think this, this new position was, uh, it was obviously you know, not considered to be as premium, but they thought that that would be a, a good test. It sold 20 times the amount of the other machine just because it was interactive, just because it had uh, you know, that, that, that draw for the consumer. And this was just one of uh, three different uh, LCD answers that uh, are now in market uh, for Samsung. Interestingly, the, um, the, when Samsung, uh, they, 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 they built this machine, and, and, and after building the machine, they were like, how do we take this machine from Suwon, Korea um, to Atlanta and, and, and get you know, someone like Coca-Cola to sign up. And, and they called us back and said, you know, we, we've, we've done it, we've, we've cracked it. Now we've got this problem of actually finding out how to, how to do that. So we just replayed that video prototype for, for Coca-Cola, who are also a client of ours, and, and the deal was pretty much done within a, few, a couple of months. So, the power of, 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 of that as a, as, a, as a prototype which can be transported um, was, was suddenly made to, 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 to be true. Um, uh, next, uh, we have a, a product in, in market. I think it was called Kickstart or Jump or Jumpstart or something when we uh, first developed it. Um, uh, um, every, maybe every day. So um, we're working with a Nutrisystem, and uh, um, this uh, their brief here was 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 to try and save their business. Right? We actually get quite a few of the clients who are in a little bit of a uh, a problem. They come to us, and and you know we really need help, and uh, we need growth quickly. Um, Nutrisystem, I think, were uh, that had come off the back of uh, a number of uh, bad quarters and. And they were looking to us to find a new vector for, for, for their bu business and to think about expanding into new channels. And, and the insights that we, we, we came up with here um, were very much around the situation. Um, and uh, what we understood is what, you know, some of the inherent things about dieting and, and, and when people fall off. And some of the inherent problems with uh, Nutrisystem, which is, you know, you have to buy into this big system. And this big system 
you, you know, is, 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 a, is a month that is delivered to my home. Um, and uh, there's no visibility to the brand uh, except for, uh, you know, if you go around to somebody's house and you see that they're, they're on it. Um, maybe that's a good thing, but it certainly wasn't a, a good thing for Nutrisystem uh, uh, to, to be able to publicize their success. So we designed and built uh, a, a product for them, um, uh, which I, I think is now called uh, uh, Jumpstart. Um, when we first uh, you know, came up with the idea, it was called uh, Nutrisystem uh, Every Day. You and me were meant to be walking So now you've got all your ducks in a row. You've decided to lose a few pounds on your own, stock the house with nutritious food, and you're off to a great start. The tricky part is all that time away from the safety of home, when what's handy usually isn't healthy. How do you keep those ducks in a row when you're off at work? Well, it's easy now because you've got a system. Day by Day by Nutrisystem, the bridge to a better you. Created by the nutrition experts at Nutrisystem, Day by Day is a deliciously smart daily system of weight loss bars and smoothies that make it easy to stay on track through the demands, tests, and temptations of your work week. Just have a healthy breakfast at home and Day by Day has you covered until you're home again for dinner. Enjoy a delectably satisfying bar as a mid-morning snack, then a creamy smoothie for lunch, and another bar as the perfect mid-afternoon break. Based on Nutrisystem's proven low GI nutritional science, Day by Day works together to keep you satisfied and energized through the day, without that hollow, hungry crash that lures you to the candy machine. And with a whole week system in one handy pack, you don't have to plan your week or pack a lunch every day. Just tuck it in your desk Monday morning and you're good to go. In delectable varieties like Berry Blast, Vanilla Paradise, and Chocolate Lovers. Staying on track through the day has never been this easy or this delicious. So those ducks stay right in a row. You're shaking off some pounds and heading in the right directions. Day by day by Nutrisystems, the bridge to a better you. So from the situation here, um, uh, where it, it was the, 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 the box at home for the month, it's now um, in, in the supermarket. Um, it's a trial mechanism. It's in their office. It's in their drawer. It's when they need it. It's, it, it, it's part, of their, part of their life. It's a whole, it's a whole set of different food um, for, uh, for, for Nutrisystem to produce. It's getting them into a, a slightly different market, but also a new channel which they knew that they needed to, to achieve all based around thinking about the situations that this, the, this woman was going to find herself in. Um, I thought I'd share one, uh, one final uh, case study um, and, uh, and, and uh, before moving on to the last section on, on insights, uh, which was for Starwood. And uh, the insight that we were working with here um, so, well, firstly, the, the Starwood wanted us to, to help uh, them with their, their, their loyalty uh, program and, 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 and increase the share of wallet within the, um, the SPG rewards uh, versus other uh, hotels out there. Um, and the, the insight here that we, 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 we got to quite quickly was all around uh, interpersonal uh, nature. And it's based on some of the fundamentals of... of, uh, of, of based on some of the fundamentals of what human loyalty is and, and versus uh, the traditional terms of what a loyalty card is. Human loyalty and a loyalty card had nothing in common, right? Um, loyalty is all around uh, the number of years that you're together. The longer you're together, the, the, the better that relationship is. Um, and uh, loyalty programs tended to be um, based on a year. And, uh, and if you didn't perform within that year, then they're going to knock you off that block. Um, so we uh, thought about um, how we could build a new type of commitment, a new type of relationship with, with our consumers. Um, and uh, one of the really important uh, p 
pieces from a commercial side here was we, we uncovered that um, the, not all of the, the, the different members were, were, were going to be equal. There was actually a group of people that, that we think we turned them uh, uh, to be uh, road warriors, extreme road warriors. And these uh, represented 2% uh, of, of, of the overall uh, market of different uh, travelers. But they represented 30% of uh, SPG's profit. So by targeting these guys, we could have a disproportionate effect on, on their business and what the loyalty program meant. Hotel rewards programs are all the same. There's you, a mountain, a rock, and a clock. Your job is to push the rock up the mountain in 12 months or less. Go far enough, fast enough, and you make gold or platinum. Reach the top, and there's nowhere else to go. Slow down, and you go backwards. But all that's about to change forever. Starwood introduces Infinity, the world's first progressive rewards program. Infinity is a simple revolution with just one rule. You always move forward, which means you never go back to a lower level of status and rewards, and you never top out on a plateau. You see, starting now and for the rest of your life, Infinity will offer you better and better rewards every five nights you stay with us. The more you stay with us, the more points each night is worth, the better we get to know you, and the nicer your rewards become. And it's not all about how many nights you've spent with us this year. It's based on a lifetime of loyalty. Those nights you spent with us three years ago count as much as the one next week. It's the end of What Have You Done For Me Lately rewards programs and the beginning of Loyalty For Life, a relationship that just keeps getting better and better and better. Ad infinitum. Infinity by SPG, the world's first progressive rewards program. Forever forward. So last year, Starwood uh, launched this uh, lifetime loyalty card um, and uh, um, it has added, I believe, uh, said here, I think 20% uh, uh, to their business um, over the last 12 months um, of new members and, and having the effect uh, that um, uh, you know, we hoped and desired from that. So uh, I've run through some case studies. Um, I, I wanted to uh, talk lastly just about how you might try and find insight in the things that you're doing. Um, and um, these last few pieces uh, of information, hopefully, um, uh, you know, can be fresh and, and uh, uh, it's certainly stuff that we uh, run through uh, to every person at Fahrenheit um, who uh, comes in to, to join ID Development or, or Magic. Um, how do you really go about finding insights? Um, well, the first piece is that whenever possible, get away from the computer. Um, you know, we, f we spend far too much time sitting there. Uh, you know, you may be able to get the facts. You may be able to get some of those uh, accepted consumer beliefs, but you're really not going to likely find that insight. Um, get up, walk around, go talk to people, um, go study whatever you can, um, build up the um, that knowledge bank, but, but do it in a way um, that is uh, away from the computer as much as possible. Um, next, uh, treat everything like an experiment. So this is really about applying uh, tests and trials and, 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 and you know, performing analysis and, and making comparisons. And you know, we, we, we you do as much research as possible. This doesn't have to be consumer focus groups research. Uh, it can be, as I say, you know, speaking to, to friends, speaking to colleagues, uh, experts that you know, your mum, your wife. Uh, all of that can help understand uh, and, uh, and test, you know, different hypotheses you have. Um, as I said at the beginning, you know, we have uh, quite a few uh, uh, ex-architects in our company, and it seems like you know, the, the, a lot of those principles and a lot of the way of thinking um, when you have to to, to, to work within set rules and, and, and plan and strategize as to how you're going to do that. It's very much about performing little experiments and understanding and, and, and when things fail, 
that's, that's all right. You just you, you change the way that that's going to work. And, and we really want uh, uh, everything to be on that uh, rolling experiment basis. The next is about uh, you know, digging deep. Uh, it's a common misbelief uh, that insights just come to you. Right? They don't. They, they really have to be worked at. You have to really get into a, a problem. Right? Even the best people within our company, the most insightful people, I tell you, they work the hardest at it. Um, and, and it's about building that knowledge bank. And it's about thinking about what lies behind that, what, what somebody said. Um, when we go into research, yeah, it, it's not just about listening for, for, for the conversation, thinking about what it was that they meant when they said it, and then also thinking about the things that they didn't say and really trying to understand what, what was missing and, 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 and why they left that out. What are those, what are those things that are, uh, were, were, were just accepted by the group? Um, the things that no one questions. And, and to try and get as much as you can behind and dig as, uh, as deep as you can. Um, with our clients, we talk about um, the problem behind the problem. And, and you know, often they'll come to us and they'll say things like, um, we were hoping that you would uh, you know, invent this for us. Uh, or um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have a very matter-of-fact way. But, but as you start to understand, the, the, the problem may be larger. The problem may be that they've got a distribution system that's just falling apart. Um, the problem may be uh, that their cogs are three times higher than their competitors. We have to try and get to those answers as quickly as we can and then build solutions that, that are built uh, to, to answer that. Um, moving the camera around the room, so uh, different vantage points, um, are massively, massively important. Um, put yourself in your competitor's shoes, or um, you know, put yourself in your, your sing the single mum's shoes from Texas, uh, in the retailer's shoes, in your client's shoes. Um, really try and think about the problem from, from that different angle. Actually, one of the different uh, brainstorming techniques we, we did once was, we passed out different shoes pairs to people and, and said, right, okay, develop from that. Um, because there really is uh, you know, the importance in, in thinking about uh, those different vantage points and different perspectives. And, and of, of course, that, that's core of what we do. Um, but sometimes it needs to be forced into, into other ones beyond the consumer that, that may be the most obvious. And, and that different vantage point, it really extends to, to outside of the category. I, I, I love this. Um, this quote from Gary Hamill's uh, Innovation Now uh, article. Um, when most people think about the future, they typically take 98% of the industry orthodoxy as a given. That means that before they start, they've already limited their potential for innovation to about 2% of their available space. Orthodoxy is the enemy of renewal. The future gets created by heretics. Um, so start thinking outside of your category and then come back to your category. Start thinking, you know, from, from whatever inspiration could be, other categories or, 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 or nature or, or, or the world, and, and come back to your category last as much as possible. Um, in, uh, in so many categories, we find that there's... Um, there's a paradigm there. There's an accepted belief. Um, and, and, and that can be so long entrenched within that category um, that we really have to have um, like a disrespect for, for those paradigms, for that present reality. And the more we can um, look into to places, that have, have, you know, places that have not changed in years are often the most fun for us to innovate in. You know, it, seem, it seems bizarre. It may be that uh, insurance or credit cards uh, um, or soup um, may, may, may be the area that is, 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 is less interesting to some. To me, that's fascinating because it tends to have the areas where things have been the way for, for so long, right? Campbell's, you know, we, when we started working with them, they'd had 35 years of consecutive decline, um, the soup category generally, not say Campbell's as a company actually. Uh, the super category had been going like this, and, and they were stuck in the can. And they were stuck in a belief that they were a simple meal when they were neither simple nor a meal. Um, these days, there were so many other options there. They were stuck in a belief that they should speak to men and women in separate groups, and 
and we spoke to the Insight director who'd been there for 25 years, and at the end of um, our, our research, um, he was like, I just didn't think I would see those, 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 those things from, you know, f afresh and, and understand that from a different perspective. Often the places where it's been the most stayed are the most fun uh, to, to, to look to and, and, and to innovate a, a, around. Um, my son's a great inspiration to me. Uh, um, the child's, munge, the ch the child's uh, mind is a, is, is, is a sponge, right? And uh, it, it, it's thinking like a child uh, is, is a great way of, uh, of, of working. They've got this benefit of a lack of experience, right? And, and funnily enough, a lack of experience in a category when you're trying to come up with new things is, 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 is really interesting. Um, to temporarily forget what you know, uh, um, to disassociate yourself from the problem. Um, one of my colleagues uh, likes to begin every project by just writing down everything he can before he goes and reads all of the, the documents and data and, and getting into that. That's a tremendously valuable thing because he then looks back and when he knows all of that, he looks back about, all right, what were my beliefs and what were my conceptions before I knew anything? And how do they tally? And, and that difference in that vector between those two is, is, is incredibly valuable for, for him. You know, the, the, the child, you know, will ask, you know, that one question, why, repeatedly. And it's such a great question. Um, you know, he's just about becoming a little annoying at the moment because he just repeats it again and again and again. But, you know, that, that, it's such a wonderful you know, thing when, when they, that, that mind opened. You know, why, why did he do that? Why did he say that? Why does it have to be that way? Why can't I have peanut butter and chocolate? You know, these are the sort of things that will lead you on to... To, to, to answering it in a new way. And, and sometimes the answer is, you know, I don't know. And, and, and how do we, we, we work that out? I found this, uh, this video which um, uh, you know, really brought this alive for me and, and made me think uh, and crystallize some of my thinking about uh, thinking like an amateur. Grown-ups. Kids are awesome. Stop listening to your old stuff and listen to me. The smartest people in the world are kids. I'll prove it to you. Telephones, invented by kids. Paper airplanes, invented by kids. Make a toast with your armpit. <laughs> Next time when you see a kid, say thank you. You grown-ups can invent stuff too. You just have to stop being boring. Like saying stuff like, I will like this. <laughs> Say, how can I make things better? If it doesn't make the world better, don't do it. Uh, excuse me, big sis. I got some dancing to do. So, yeah, think like a kid. Um, there's also uh, this, this, this quote which I, I loved uh, um, from Steve Jobs in, in uh, a, a wide interview from 96. And, and he says, um, creativity is just connecting things. When you ask creative people how they did something, they feel a little guilty because they didn't really do it. They just saw something. It seemed obvious to them after a while. Um, I feel like this a lot. Um, I feel uh, um, that the things that I, I, I come up with, the, the areas where I put these together, it seems very obvious because it was kind of obvious to me. But it's built up of this, this, this sort of whole database of different facts and things um, that are only unique in my head. And, and somehow when I, when I articulate that, um, it comes out and I'm, and I'm, and I'm nervous, I'm anxious. And what I learned over the time was it's really important to be okay with being anxious, right? Um, when, you, when you're writing a to-do list, you put the hard things and the easy things on that list, and you, it's great satisfaction to cross out the first couple of easy things, right? But it's actually the, 
you know, the hard ones, the, the, the ones that are um, the important challenges, um, they, they fill us with anxiety. And, 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 I, and I, you've got to be okay with that. Um, because you know, that actually drives us on to, to know that you've got to go better. You know you've got to challenge yourself to go a little bit further. Um, you have to beat your last idea. You have to make sure that it's not obvious to those people. You have to, to, to think harder around it. You have to, to be able to sell it. You have to be able to support it. Um, and all of these things, you know, that anxiety makes me want to back it up. It makes me want to um, uh, make sure that I'm in the, uh, I'm, I'm in the, the, the right place uh, with those ideas. And it also makes sure that I don't settle just for an easy answer. Um, last couple of uh, things, uh, pieces of advice. Um, I love to sleep on some things, right? I love to, to take my mind away from, uh, from thinking about a challenge. And, and you know, whether it's a, a walk outside or, um, or, 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 or a breather or, or sleeping, taking your mind away from the problem. And then it's amazing how often your subconscious just allows those things to pop into the head, the right answer to pop into your head. Um, and uh, for me, 3 a.m. used to be actually my most productive creative time. Uh, I had to keep a pad by the bed. I'd wake up in the middle of the night, I'd make notes. Um, now that my daughter gets up at 5, it's very unlikely that 3 a.m. is going to be a very helpful time. But um, know what your creative time is. Know when you can, you can maximize that potential. And, 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 and you know, for, for some people, it may be the morning. Some people, it may be you know, after a glass of wine in the evening. Wh whatever that is, know what it is. And, and do your best work there. Where you, need, you don't always need to be creative in your day, but allocate that time to creative thinking. Um, and give time to, to creative thoughts. Mull on it. Sleep on it. Let those, let those you know, fester. Because I think that's... Uh, 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 you know, just it's amazing how, how well that, that, that does for, for your ideas. Um, and then my last uh, 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 you know, piece of advice is, is, is really strive to be wrong a lot. Um, there's nothing uh, necessarily important around 40%. It just seemed that uh, it was a helpful number as I talked to you know, people that um, you know, work with, with us at Fahrenheit. But you know, allowing yourself to be wrong um, you know, really provides the opportunity to create more disruptive ideas, uh, more disruptive innovations. Um, because you can be really, really, really right for the other 60% if you're wrong on those ones, right? There are certain ways where it's helpful to be wrong and there are certain ways where it's not so helpful to be wrong. Um, it's helpful uh, to be wrong when you're pushing the boundaries of what the brief is, um, running at other hypotheses, and creating things that might not actually work. Um, because these, these tend to work out from what that challenge is and rethink it. It's less helpful to be wrong um, if you're off the strategy, off the brief completely. Um, you're, you're, you're being repetitive of, of what somebody else has done. Um, uh, th there's another product out there that, that, that is like that. Um, it's also unhelpful if, if it's not motivating a response. If you're, if you're not able to... To, to create um, uh, uh, a smile, a reaction, either positive or negative. We really hope that um, the, the ideas that we present get that reaction. Um, the, the worst is the, you know, that calmness, the, 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 the no smile, the no reaction. Like, intensity, if, if negative, can be really, really helpful because you can understand and reframe that in a different way. So um, that uh, concludes um, my piece on insight, and uh, thanks a lot for your time. <laughs> <laughs>